Well, I spent three years of my life in Australia. In actual fact, I didn't spend three years. I spent 18 months. But 18 months in Australia is like three years anywhere else. <laughs> and very, the Australians are very proud of the country. I left London on Friday at 4.30 in the afternoon. I flew all through Friday, all through Saturday, all through Sunday, and I arrived after 36 hours on an aeroplane. I arrived and see my eyes are hanging out. And the fellow says, how did you find Australia? <laughs> I said, I got off the bloody plane and it was there. The Australians actually, I, I know the Irish have a funny way of talking, but the Australians have also a funny, they add I-E onto a lot of words. I was there around Christmas and I said to a fellow, I said, what are you going to do on Christmas? He said, well, I think I'll get up, Chrissy die, <laughs> I'll have my bracky, <laughs> I'll pick up the cozy, go for a dippy, Watch a game of footy, have a game of drinkies, and then I'll come home and have a yummy, yummy Chrissy Dindin. <laughs> he was 64 years of age. <laughs> they love the, they love the, in Australia, they love the booze. But the beer is so cold. It's like you have to have gloves to pick up the glass. <laughs> Three beers and you look, there's no moon. <laughs> Everything's got to be cold. And you get a tramp, a wino, goes into a chemist shop and said, uh, do, you have a, do you have a bottle of metal-lighted spirits? And the chemist said, yes, gives him one. He said, what's the matter? Don't you have a cold one? <laughs> they drink. They drink. I, I arrived there and somebody said, would you like a schooner? I thought he was going to give me a boat. And they're always telling me, they always, as soon as you arrive in Australia, they say, watch out for the sharks. And they don't say a shark will eat you or chew you up. They say he'll take you. <laughs> You're going to be taken by a shark. <laughs> and I think to myself, well, if he takes me, he'll die of alcoholic poisoning. <laughs> and I'm swimming. But in the back of my mind, sharks. I'm thinking of it, and I'm swimming away, and a fellow goes underneath me, swims on, I don't even see him, and he comes right under, and he goes, with his finger, shoo, down my stomach. <laughs> yeah. Nobody swam in that sea for about three days. <laughs> it is the nearest thing I have ever done to my life. I was across the water on the beach. <laughs> I was, when I was out there, I, I hired in the, down on the coast a bungalow kind of shack, hut, which we used to go for weekends. And we always used to get down there and have a few beers and swim and eat, laugh, joke. And then one of these Australian friends of mine said, uh, hey, dive. Uh, you want to be uh, careful about the grass around here. Uh, it's getting very tall, and a lot of snakes, they live in the grass. You want to cut it. And I said, well, I'm never here. I only come here every six weeks or something. How the hell am I going? He said, well, buy yourself a sheep. <laughs> Tether him, and he laid up all the grass. So I thought it was a very good idea. I bought a sheep for five quid, tied him up, Six months later, he's as big as a house. <laughs> Ooh, everywhere. <laughs> Somebody said, you want to get him sheared? He'll dehydrate. <laughs> so I go back to Sydney and I go through the yellow pages. Sheep shearing. And unknown to me, I am ringing up the biggest sheep shearing company in the world. <laughs> And I said, I'm making inquiries about sheep shearing. The woman said, uh, one second, please. And I was, I believe you're making inquiries about sheep shearing. I said, yes. He said, well, let me tell you our rates first. We sheep, uh, we shear sheep uh, per 5,000, 10,000, 50,000, 100,000. We've got different rates. We've got peace rate. We, uh, 
We do hourly rate, weekly rate, monthly rate. It all depends on the number of sheep that you have, percentage loss, percentage gain. <laughs> How many sheep do you have? I said, one. <laughs> he said, really? What's his bloody name? I'll tell you something, I'll tell you, and I mean this very sincerely, the Australians are perhaps one of the most hospitable and generous people in the world. I mean, if, they, if you're stuck for a night, they'll give you a bed. If you haven't got a drink, they'll give you a drink. If you've got no money, they'll give you money. The food, they'll take the food off the plate and give it to you. It's those white Australians I don't like. <laughs> Somehow or another, I don't think this show is going to be sold to Australians.